this month's presidential election are gradually getting to a definitive point. And despite the all too familiar challenges confronting the electoral process, it has become increasingly certain that Nigerians will get their chance to make a choice one way or the other on February the 25th. Labour Party's presidential standard bearer, Peter Ubi, as much as anyone, has contributed his own quota to elevating the quality of political conversation ahead of the elections. And we are delighted to welcome him to this day live. Great to have you on the program, uh, Mr. Obi. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Ruben, for inviting me. Well, let me start by asking, how has the uh, campaign been? I, I mean, uh, what has it been like? And uh, before now, almost every poll put you ahead of others. But I've seen just one recent one that put another person ahead of you. But how has it been? Well, Ruben, what I've done is to concentrate more on trying to go around and visit all over Nigeria, trying to elucidate to them on the need why, why they should vote for me and what I offer, or what Labour Party is offering them. You know, so that's my concentration now. Going to places where people have not been before to say to them, you know, what you can call the ungoverned places, to say to them, come, let us build it, that a new Nigeria is possible. We can all come together, sacrificing everything. Issues of tribe, issues of religion, and other sentiments, and let's come together and say, we have a country called Nigeria, and that we can start doing the right things in it. Well, okay, let's uh, talk about some of the major issues. I've, I've seen you in the papers today, you know, some, uh, some reports quoting you, saying that the uh, currency redesign, which is causing a lot of upside, a lot of, you know, concerns, among Nigerians, you, you were saying it's not peculiar to Nigeria, and that Nigerians should bear with the federal government. Uh, but we see these same Nigerians, the counter buses to the new Nara notes, uh, whether at the banking halls or at the ATMs or through POS or through cash uh, swap uh, uh, program. In fact, so bad that people have gone to the streets in parts of Nigeria, in Wari, in Benin, elsewhere in a battle to protest. And yet you still say, this is a good policy. People should bear with Nigerians. And the president has now said, give me seven days, we'll look at the, pro uh, the problem. Some people are saying, before seven days time, oh, many people will be dead. Well, my position is still, um, I don't think you read my position all through, but let me restate my position. Currency redesign is not peculiar to Nigeria. This is an exercise that has a long-term economic and social benefit, but comes with a short-term inconveniences and pain. And my appeal still to Nigerians is that we should have patience with the federal government of Nigeria and the Central Bank of Nigeria, while at the same time appealing to Central Bank of Nigeria and the bank to expedite actions that will ensure that this new currency is available to small depositors, small businesses, the unbanked, and people in rural areas. Mine is to be able to make it available to the, what you can call those at the bottom of the ladder, to make it available. And this, I believe the CBN and this can make available as quickly as possible. Everywhere, Ruben, they've been redesigned of currency. In a third world country that I've known, it comes with even what you said, right? This was, look at what happened in India. Didn't you watch what happened in India? It was, uh, it was worse, worse than what was happening here. There were royals, there were everything all over the place. But eventually, Indians will tell you today they are better off. I 
and the economy benefited better. So for me, and it's worth some times when this happened in this country. This thing was announced on the 26th of October. 26th of November was the month. 26th of December was second month. 26th of January was third month. And I even gave another extra 10 days. And all of a sudden, people are writing up and down and everything. And people are not behaving as if they were, it just came overnight. It didn't come. For me, it is the poor people and those poor people that I'm seeing on the queue that we should deal with as quickly as possible. And I urge CBN deal with this issue of those low dep small depositors and people who are living in rural areas on banks and everything to make it available for small businesses to be able to thrive. It is critical, it's important. I'm also urging Nigerians bear with them. We've resigned our currency. We can't do anything about it now. For me, it's a policy. Government have taken a decision. And we can't be using two currencies at the same time. Can we? Or did the new one is out. It's in people's hands. Are you going to withdraw it and start using the old one? So, for me, it's a decision that has been taken. Let's go on with it. Okay, Mr. B, it's good. You said, you know, currency redesign is done everywhere. You cited the example of India. Yes. November 2016, under Prime Minister Narendra Modi. In fact, the Indian authorities at the time gave four hours notice for 1,000 rupees, 500 rupees to be brought back into the system. How was it three months? Before then, in 1984, under this same President Buhari, when he was a military head of state, he gave two, 12 days. There's a popular song by Kolinti Anyela uh, reminding us of it, and he sang about the hardship in Nigeria. This time around, we have had over 100 days, and we're having a repeat of 1984. Why is it that we never get it right here? And how will this policy, in your view, move us from consumption to production, which is your major campaign's message? Well, that is a different message. The redesign, I said, it has a long time affect what they're trying to do. But when it comes to issue of consumption to production, I have said consistently Nigeria is not producing anything. That is why you have all the economic problems you're facing, starting from your unemployment. You have today 35% unemployment with almost over 50% youth unemployment. So you have millions of your youths who don't know where the next meal will come from. That is at the core of your poverty. Because if you say that 193 million Nigerians are living in multidimensional poverty, it's because of lack of production. That is the demand of your economic growth. The consequences that you need to deal with it. You're not producing anything. And when I talk about production, the easiest way to show that you're not a producing country is to look at your exports. Look at your food production. Ruben, our country is 200 million people living on 923,000 square kilometers of land. 60% of your arable land are all cultivated and you are importing food. It shouldn't be. India is 1.4 Billion people living on 3.2 million square kilometers of land. They are able to feed themselves and export agricultural products. You live almost on one third of their land and you're one seventh of their population. So you have more land for agriculture. So we need to deal with issue your cultivated land in the north is our biggest physical asset. If you go into it genuinely supporting small farmers to do an agrarian revolution, which will lead to industrialization because the entire value chain, which will, which will be export-led, 
you will see a different thing. One is that, Ruben, you're going to create a job at the agricultural level. You're going to create a job at the industrial level. And by the time you do export, you'll be able to deal with the issue of what you're sovereign to do to your rate of exchange. Your exchange is weak because your reserve is low and your reserve is a result of your export. And if you can export more because of the, what I've just said now, you'll be able to stabilize that. Countries that have seen their exchange come down by doing the right things. And Nigeria can do that. Ruben, in 2000, I said it in this session before, in 2021, Nigerian total export is 18.9 trillion naira. That is at 650 to the dollar today. That is under 30 billion dollars. Ruben, countries have compared us with, like Vietnam, is 100 million people living in 331,000 square kilometers of land. They are as, so the half of our population living on one third of our land. Their total export is over 350 billion dollars. We couldn't do 10 percent of what they did. And Vietnam's export is almost 90 percent manufactured goods. That's what I'm saying. That we need to be more productive. By being more productive, we will be able to create jobs. There's a lot we can do today if we do the right things. Well, yesterday you were in Abeokuta yes. uh, for a rally. You were supposed also to be in Ibadan, but you couldn't make it to Ibadan because there were protests on the streets of Ibadan. I didn't, the, I, didn't even, the day before. I didn't even know whether about the protest until maybe. Let me tell you what happened. Okay. Actually, is that I was I, I first had an issue. I was supposed to go to Ibadan using a service of a helicopter, and I was told they had an issue of fuel. By the time I, they have, when I resolved it about twelve one, they said to me. And where I was supposed to land, I shouldn't land there because there's riots. Nobody said to me, well, they are riding for this or for that. I said, okay, fine. Let me go. You know, I've always, I said, let me go. Maybe if I go there and I see the situation is unsafe, I'll go. Ruben, I eventually arrived in Bado. But unfortunately for me, when I arrived in Bado, where I arrived and everything, I couldn't see necessary uh, security to escort me to where I was going. So I said, well, listen, I can't just be going. I didn't even know the address of where I'm going. So it was difficult. So I decided to go back. And I apologize most sincerely for those who were waiting for me there. And I'm trying to see what I can do to have a new date to be able to go back there. Because it's not good that people waited for you and you did not show up. I did everything to show up, but it was beyond me. Well, the protest in Ibadan was about scarcity of Naranos. Oh, okay. Scar scarcity, which the country faces. It was also about fuel scarcity. Now, this fuel scarcity, the uh, midstream and downstream uh, petroleum resources uh, or regulatory authority has said, oh, NMPC now has up to 1.6 billion uh, liters. But one question that people have been asking is that with this problem of fuel scarcity, will it be solved? by removal of subsidy and also local production by local refineries. What do you think? Well, you know, everybody knows my stand on subsidy. Subsidy needs to go as quickly as possible because for me, it's organized crime. But in doing so, we must put in place aggressive effort to ensure that the local refineries 
start functional as quickly as possible. Then go to its own, it's almost completed. And we have other modular refineries all over the place. Some are even ready, but they can't get supply of crude. So these are things we have to resolve as quickly as possible and get production locally to commence in order to reduce the suffering of Nigerians. Just like I said, if currency was what they are about, let's do whatever we can do to ensure that the people, less privileged people, do not suffer any longer in Nigeria. They are suffering a lot. For me, the government energy should be on protecting and serving the less privileged, small businesses. That is critical. Well, let's take on uh, about two or more other issues. Yesterday, when you were campaigning in Abeokuta, you were campaigning on your record as governor for eight years in Anambra State, how the state won the prize, was recognized for being first in the realization of millennium uh, development uh, goals in Anambra State. But that's in Anambra State. The presidential candidate of the APC went there recently in Oka. And he said, uh, uh, he has read the Bible, that Peter in the Bible betrayed Jesus Christ three times. And that uh, Peter, will be, who is from this uh, Anambra state, will betray Nigerians. He called you Mr. Stingy. That uh, you said you were saving money. That saving money for what? That if you, are, if you want to be president of Nigeria, you need a man who will deploy resources to spend, to, to achieve results. Not somebody who will sit on resources and uh, you will say it's Mr. Stingy. So I have not seen your response to that, but uh, this, <laughs> there is an attempt to, you know, tag this uh, label upon you and make it stick permanently. Well, uh, um, Polatinibu remains a, a, a very respected senior brother at the time, you know, but so he has a right to his opinion. But he forgets to do that even when Peter denied Jesus three times, he still made him the head of the church. He still built the church on him. It is the rock on which he built the church. That means that uh, notwithstanding the denial, the, church, the God found him wanting to build that rock. And I'm saying that trust this country to me. I will rebuild it. It will be the same rock on which they will rebuild this country. I bet you. And stinginess. Because we don't know what is called capital formation. The most, in, for you to develop, it is a critical thing. Go and read famous economists. Over the years, capital formation is about saving. If you don't save, you can't form capital, capital. And if you don't have capital, you can't develop. Ruben, I was number one in MDG, which is the only measure of development. The difference between developed and undeveloped place is educational health. I was number one in education. I was one of the best in health. I was number one in pulling in, in issue of pulling people out of poverty. You can go and ask Magnus Pacol, who is in charge then and everything. Ask all the donor agencies who is Governor who comes first to contribute his counterpart funding. It's me. And on top of that, Ruben, when everybody's owing salary, or in pension, or in gratuity, or in contractors, which have collapsed most of the contractors, I left office not owing one contractor or supplier, not owing pension or gratuity, not doing anything, and ended up saving over 75 billion naira, which nobody have ever done. I did not in any way allocate myself any contract directly or indirectly. Allocate myself any land directly or, directly or indirectly. 
or become a consultant to any of the company, uh, state agencies, anything, directly or indirectly, I wasn't even entitled to any gratuity or pension to date. So yes, I agree that Peter denied Jesus three times. He should remorse, repented, and Jesus entrusted the church on him. And I'm asking Nigerians to entrust Nigeria on me. Mm, okay, fair enough. But there's something even more interesting. The governor of Kaduna State, Nasir Rufai, says nobody should take you seriously because you will not win. And that you are based in Hollywood actor. Okay, the Actors Guild of Nigeria has responded that he's putting down their well, profession. They don't need but, uh, to protest. Rufai says you can't score more than 1% in Sokoto, 2% in uh, Katsina, maybe 5% in uh, Kano. And that, that's all there is. And that you should focus on Hollywood. Well, I thank Rufai for what he said. At least he gave me some percentage. You know, so I'm going to work hard to improve those percentage. And he recognized the fact that I'm an actor. And I think part of what is uh, holding this country from development is recognizing those engines that will develop us. One of the most critical places I want to focus is improving our entertainment industry, which includes the Nollywood. And now that I'm a claimed actor, I'm asking all those who are involved in the entertainment industry, be one of them to support me so that I can improve their position. What else can you do when people in your industry, when those who are here have recognized me as one of them, I urge them to support me so that we can be able to ensure I build their business better. Okay, but before we go, uh, Mr. Peter, have you, there have been reports of defections from your party to other parties, in Ekiti specifically, in Bauchi specifically, and even more in Jigawa. And we just have, uh, as it is now, just a matter of days uh, to the presidential election. How are you addressing this division, this uh, defection from your party to other parties? Quite frankly... Ruben, I'm focused on building a new Nigeria, not on defections. For me today, Nigeria have a huge problem. Ruben, we live in a country today that has huge debts that we don't know where we are going to start dealing with it. We have a country we are 139 million people, sorry, 33 million people are in poverty. We have a country with over 20 million at our school children. How do you now worry about who is defecting to what? My concentration is how do we start pulling people out of poverty? How do we start securing people? People are insecure here. So that's not what worry me. For example, you mentioned where people are defecting or not, where I will get one vote or where I will get two votes. Ruben, I went to Bauchi. You must have heard it because it was in your news. And I went to pay my respect to Tafa Balawa. And I said to why didn't why did God not give us men like this over the years? This man in 1964 borrowed our first loan, $82 million to build the Kainji Dam to generate 760 megawatts of electricity. I have a letter to the World Bank. I had a reply. Ruben, 59 years after, our debt is 77 trillion naira. I don't know which rate to use, but since my own rate is usually 650, but if I use the government rate, official rate, 400, am I right? 
That will give you about 187 billion dollars. Ruben, that 82 million dollars then is about approximately now about 1 billion 250 million dollars. If you divide it with 187 billion, but with 180, 187, it will give you approximately to about 150 kind of dams. Where is it? That's what you should be worrying Nigeria. Not that means so be defective from this place to that place. A new Nigeria is possible. That's what Dati, Baba Ahmed, and myself are offering Nigerians. It is time to do a proper generational change by saying these parties have tried for the past 20 years, all Nigeria produces insecurity, worsened, poverty, taboo, out of school children, worsened, our primary health care collapsed, death, I don't know how I was, I would say quadruple now, death, you know what death we want to build. So everything are headed south. We have overtaken India in infant mortality. Fuel scarcity, all sorts of things are going wrong. So for me, our concentration view, how do we start reversing this? That's what we should do. Okay. I'm offering myself to this job saying, this year the election should not be based on tribal, religion, or my turn. It is turn of Nigerians to take back their country and start rebuilding it. If there's anybody who will stay turn, it's me. I'm a proud Igbo man. I'm a proud South Easterner. But I'm doing this election as a more proud Nigerian who believes that if I have the opportunity, five years, Nigerians will stop saying where they came from. But they will be happy that they are Nigerians because we'll start rebuilding a new Nigeria that everybody should be proud of. That is what should be a worry. Not that, oh, this happened, or this person defected. For me, let's start now. Okay. I mean, you've been on the uh, campaign uh, trail. Uh, you visited so many parts of the country. But what we're hearing now is that there are many Nigerians that are concerned about whether or not this election we hold. I I said the election dates are sacrosanct and there will be elections. But some other people are saying, in fact, first scarcity, the combined forces of first scarcity and uh, cash scarcity uh, will seem to be an attempt to derail the process and impose an interim national government on Nigeria. Well, I don't really see how cash scarcity I don't see how the cash cuts the affairs that are they going to take their is a is a is a cash now and their voters card. That is the more reason they should go out and vote. Let's start doing things in a different way. So I don't see any reason why cash casting unless the cash is gonna be used for another thing, which I disagree with. First scarcity, all these things can be improved. For me, if we had done the right things by removing subsidy and making sure that this is available, it would have been solved since, Ruben. Let us stop dribbling about Nigerians. Nigeria is a country blessed with a lot of factor endowment for each region and can easily be turned around as quickly as possible. It is time for people, this election should be on character, we can trust, on competence, commitment, and above all, compassion for the people suffering masses of Nigeria. This election should be about those who have the mental and physical capacity to deal with this job. Let us not waste, we, we wasted our time, long time, trying to say, oh, we we'll go this way and everything. How about these considerations, whether it's tribe, whether it's religion, 
All those who use all this to come into office, the first victims are those who believe the world was saying, I'm offering a new Nigeria. Well, on that note, I would like to thank you very much, uh, Mr. Peter Obi, presidential candidate of the Liberal Party in the forthcoming presidential election in Nigeria on February the 25th.